Hi, I'm Pam East, and today I'm going to show you how to make your own stamps using Quick Art Reverse Art Film and photopolymer plates. The first question is, how do you get an image to make a stamp out of? Well, there's quite a few ways. Uh, one is you can paint your own designs. This is a little painting that I did with a brush and ink, and I scanned it into my computer and reduced it and then printed it out onto transparency. Um, and th this is going to be a little texture plate. Um, another way would be to use permanent marker on vellum. This is vellum, and the nice thing about vellum is that it doesn't smear, it doesn't bleed, and I can use permanent markers to draw out any kind of design I want. You can start by drawing with pencil and then fill it in with the permanent marker to get the design that you want. And then you need to layer it up. You can, you can let it dry and put another layer and let it dry and put another layer and it makes it very dark. And I can actually go straight to reverse art film from the vellum without needing any computer or scanner. Um, I did go ahead and scan this in because I wanted to put a little frame around it. Um, and I'm going to actually use this design, it's um, this one here, to do the demonstration because it's a nice bold design and you'll be able to see what I'm doing. Another way, if you don't want to do your own art, there's lots of other methods out there. You might have a photograph you want to convert. You might have um, some other kind of image that you found. A really good source is Dover uh, clip art books. Dover makes all of these stencil designs, and they're really nice. And I know they look huge, but they come with a CD. And so you can put that into your computer, size it the way that you want, print it out on transparency, and off you go. And they make dozens and dozens of these books, all kinds of designs. Um, just make sure you're using copyright, copyright free art. And these are a number of different ways to get the designs into the computer or into some form that you can then make into a stamp. The main thing you have to look for when you're designing your stamp is that your images are black and white, not color, not shades of gray, no shading. You want really bold blacks and whites because anything else isn't going to come out very well on your finished piece. So look for that and you'll do great. One more thing and that is it's sometimes hard to visualize what your finished piece is going to look like. When you're looking at your artwork, whatever it is, remember that the black portions will be impressed into the metal clay. They'll be impressed in your finished jewelry piece and the white portions will be raised in your finished jewelry piece. It's going to go through a lot of backing and forthing while you're making the stamp. Just ignore that. Just remember from your original art, black is impressed, white is raised. Okay, let's get started. All right, the first question is why reverse art film? Why not just go straight from transparency to photopolymer and skip this step? I got a couple answers for you. One is if you want to draw your own design and you don't want to go through a computer. What are you going to draw on? It's really hard to draw on transparency. Sharpie just picks itself up and you can't get a really opaque black with it. Vellum, while it works great on reverse art film, doesn't work at all on photopolymer. So you need to have an intermediate step. Also, generally speaking, we draw the design in black that we want impressed into our clay you got to make a negative of that in order for that to come out right or it's going to be reversed. So that's one reason. Another reason is transparencies printed out of the computer tend to be clear and grayish, not clear and black. They're not all that opaque. If you hold them up to the light, you'll, you'll be able to see right through that gray. Um, the reverse art film is very opaque, black, and very clear, clear, and it has very crisp edges. So it gives you the crispest, clearest result with your photopolymer plates. So it's definitely worth doing this step. Okay, let's get started. We've got a few things to show you. Um, this is the exposure stack and you need this to create a very tight seal between your image and the reverse art film. And the way it works, it's got some little clips and it's got a piece of glass and it's got a little piece of foam which helps make a real tight seal and it's got a backer which in this case is a tile but it's just some hard backing. Um, this is a UV lamp and this is what we're going to expose the film in. This particular model has 
um, two modes. It has an on mode where if I could just switch it on, or it's got a timer mode where I can have it switch to timer and when I press the red button, it goes for two minutes. And we're actually going to be using the timer mode for this. And I need the reverse art film. And this is, this is light sensitive. You don't want to leave it out laying around. It comes in black plastic to protect it. And you only get it out when you're ready to use it. So I'm going to get out a piece right now. Here we go. And it's got clear plastic. It's got plastic on one side and emulsion on the other. And it's nearly impossible to tell with the naked eye which is which. So one way to check is take a blade of some kind and scratch a corner. And if it scratches, it's emulsion. If it just slides off, it's plastic. And you need it emulsion side up. And then I'm going to take my little image. I'm going to lay it directly on the film. And I'm going to put the glass over that. And now I'm going to clamp it. And instead of clamping all four sides, I'm going to put two clamps on each side like this. And that makes it easier to get it in and out of the um, exposure unit. and it, and it exposes better this way. So there we go. I've got that all ready. And now I'm going to slide this in here. There we go. And then I'm going to start my timer. But before I do that, I'm going to put a towel over this because I don't want to look at UV light. That's not good for my eyes. So I press my little timer. I'll look just enough to make sure it came on. It did. And off it goes. OK, this is all done. Let's go ahead and get it out. I'm going to place this on the plate, emulsion side up. And then I'm going to put on some gloves. The Reverse Art Film Developer is a skin irritant. It's a little on the caustic side, so you do want to wear gloves when you're working with it. And now I'm just going to spray some on here. Get it all covered. And now we're going to time that for, for 45 seconds. If I can get the timer to go. There we go. And um, I like to use a white plate like this because um, I can really see the design when the um, emulsion clears away. You can almost see it coming up already. Yeah, we're getting down to 10, 10 more seconds. You can really see the design coming through. And five, four, three, two, one, blast off. There we go. And now I'm going to, this is just a little lint free cosmetic wipe, and I can use that to clear it away. And you can see the design's just going to come right up. I'm going to just very gently move the developer, developer around with this to get those last little spots that are on the clear areas. Shouldn't take very long. And there it is. It's all nice and clean. And now I'm going to rinse it off in water, get all the developer off of it. And then I need to dry it completely. I can pat it with a paper towel, but don't rub it. Um, it does need to be completely dry before you use it with the photopolymer film. So just go ahead and let it you know, lay it out and let it dry. You could put it in a dehydrator, that won't hurt it, or you can just let it air dry. Just like the reverse art film, photopolymer plates are also light sensitive, and they also come in these little plastic sleeves to protect them, and you don't want to get it out until you're ready to use it. So let me get one out. Got a couple of them in here. Here we go. It has a little plastic protector on it. Make sure you take that off. This doesn't work very well if you leave the plastic protector on. And now I'm going to set up my stack just like I did for the reverse art film. I'm going to put the photopolymer plate down. Then I'm going to set my image on top of that and my glass on top of that. Whoops. Make sure you get it. It doesn't shift. There we go. And then I'm going to do the two sides. And 
Okay, I put it in sideways like this because it goes back further into the unit. There we go. And I'm going to cover this up just like I did before. And this time I'm going to move it from, right now I'm just going to go to off. It was in timer mode. And I'm going to go to the on mode, but first I'm going to make sure I have a timer set for 30 seconds. This is just a 30 second exposure. So I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to start my 30 second timer. And, um, and now we're just going to wait 30 seconds. All right, so there's the timer. The first thing I'm going to do is turn off the unit, then I'm going to turn off the timer. That 30 seconds is pretty tight, so you want to make sure you have the exact 30 seconds on the light, not on the timer. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Let's get this out. I'm going to just move this out of my way now. And I will, if I keep this covered up, I don't have to worry about it. I can get myself a little more set up. Whoops, my timer was still going. I've got hot water here. This is uh, as hot as I can stand with my hands. And you can wear gloves for this if you like, but the material won't hurt you at all. So I'm going to take off the little reverse art film. And I'm going to put that into the water and let it start coming up. And actually, you can see it coming up pretty quickly. Is that showing up? And um, then we just start scrubbing it out. And this takes a little time. Just be patient with it. And I'm going to get this scrubbed all the way back to the backing because this particular design was made to do chamlevé enameling, and I want it to be as deep as I can get it. This is one of the deep plates. They make the plates in three different thicknesses. They have the point, uh, 0.18, which is the low profile, and the low profile is um, good for lettering, uh, very shallow designs, very uh, fine lines. It's really good for fine lines. Uh, then they've got the 0.26, um, and the, or it's 0.026, excuse me, it was 0.018 and 0.026. And the 0.026 is your go-to thickness. That is what you'll use for most of your designs and textures. It's just a nice medium depth. It's deep enough to give you um, some nice dimensional quality to textures, um, but the, it's not as expensive as the really deep, um, uh, the really deep photopolymer. This is the 0.059, and it is the deepest of the photopolymers. And this is what I use for enameling, um, so that I have lots of depth for shading. And you can start seeing that I'm getting starting to look a little bluish in there. That blue is um, the backing, and when I get that all cleared out. Uh, then I will have it where I want it to be. Hold on. Okay, that's done. It's all cleaned out. I'm not worried about the outside edge. I don't care about that. Um, and then I'm going to use a sponge to pull out any excess moisture. Don't use paper towels. It'll get stuck in this stuff. Just use a cellulose sponge to, to dry it out. At this point, you need to dry it completely. You can put it in your dehydrator. You can just let it sit out and air dry, but it needs to be completely dry. Once it's totally dry, you will put it back into the exposure, into the UV lamp. You don't need to use the exposure stack anymore. You'll just, you're just going to place it in there, and then you're going to turn on that two-minute timer, and you're going to re-expose it for two minutes. And that's going to finish curing the rest of the material, and then it'll be ready to use. And just like any other stamp, you'll use a release agent in it, and you'll use it to press your stamps. And that's it. Hi, got some late breaking news for you. When I was filming my 
demonstration of how to do a photopolymer plate using Revert, Quick Art Reverse Art Film and Quick Art Photopolymer plates, I used my old exposure stack, which I, it was fine, it works great. But after, after I finished, Metal Clay Supply sent me their new Quick Art UV Exposure Clamp Kit. And I just wanted to show it to you. Uh, one really nice thing is it's bigger than the old stack that I had. So you can make larger photopolymers in it. Um, and it slides really neatly right into the unit. So it works really well with the exposure unit. And I just wanted you to see that.